All right, so today I want to talk about stress in snakes. And the question is, is my snake stressed? And that is a very good question. As a matter of fact, every time I pull out Bobby here and put him around my neck, this is my bamboo ball python, pretty much on every single video, every single day. And I'm always looking at him thinking, is this snake stressed? You know, is this really stressful for my snake? And sometimes yeah, I would say it's extremely difficult to figure out if your snake is actually stressed or not. And pretty much I'd say you have to spend spend a lot of time around snakes to know if they're stressed or not. It really depends on the normal behavior of snakes. So what I'm going to cover in this video is 10 signs that your snake is stressed. And number one, the first thing is if you open up the tub or go into the enclosure and your snake starts hissing at you, I would say hissing is a good sign that your snake is not very happy. It is stressed. And it's kind of interesting because a lot of the snakes that I have here, especially Especially like my grow outs that I don't really handle a lot some of my hatchlings that I'm growing up for breeders it's funny when I first open the tub and I reach in and pick them up a lot of times they'll actually hiss at me and those snakes let me tell you they're not used to being held and they definitely will <laughs> they'll definitely tell you that they're not happy but the funny thing is, is usually after I pick them up and handle them for a little bit it only takes just a minute or two and they're completely relaxed so sometimes the stress only lasts for a little bit and I'd say especially for a snake that's not handled a lot you could definitely tell they're not happy if they start hissing all right, so the number two sign that your snake is stressed, and that is if it starts biting or striking at you. And I would say sometimes this can be a little confusing because a lot of times when I go into tubs, for example, I, I know I have some really friendly snakes, and if I actually open the tub, sometimes they'll come flying out expecting a rodent. And that is completely different than if I open up a tub and they're not really familiar with me, they're not really used to being handled, and they start hissing, followed by a strike. You know, that is an extremely stressed out snake if you hear hissing followed by a bite. But in some cases, it's not necessarily that your snake is stressed out. Sometimes it can be extremely food aggressive. I've had a lot of hatchlings like that. They get not really stressed out, but sometimes food aggressive. But you can definitely tell if they hiss followed by a strike, that is pretty much the height of stress for a snake. Okay, so the third sign that your snake is stressed out, and that is if it's trying to escape its enclosure. And I've had a lot of snakes, especially with ball pythons, sometimes they get in this mood where they're just not really happy in their enclosure. And it's, it's kind of interesting. They kind of go through phases. I'd say 99% of the time, most of my ball pythons are completely happy in these tubs. But every now and then I'll get one that is not happy. And you can actually see like the coconut husk being pushed pushed from around the sides of the tub and it all gets pushed into the middle and that means your snake is stressed because it's pacing around and around the tub and pushing all the substrate into the middle and my reticulated python was actually like that for a while Lucy was in an enclosure she pretty much outgrew these boa tubs but before I actually moved her into a bigger enclosure she kept pushing and pushing on the front glass trying to get out and really did some damage to her face which led to a respiratory infection and a whole bunch of stuff luckily she recovered from that but I would say if you if your snake is pushing trying to get out of the enclosure more than likely it is stressed so the number four sign that your snake is stressed, and this is, I would say, more likely in colubrids, not necessarily ball pythons, and that is if they start rattling their tails. I've had some little king snakes like Arizona mountain king snakes or I've had some California king snakes. If they're really small hatchlings, a lot of times they'll actually rattle their tail like a rattlesnake. It's kind of interesting. It's kind of cute. Usually only the really small hatchlings will do it, and they usually grow out of it pretty fast. All right, so the fifth sign that your snake could be stressed, and that is if it regurgitates its rodents or if it throws them up. And I would say this is most likely caused from too much handling, especially after feeding. And essentially what I would recommend is you feed the rodents to the snakes and then wait 48 hours before you handle that snake. And I'd say Bobby here around my neck is kind of an exception because he has to be in front of the camera all the time. So what I do with Bobby here is I feed him a really small, 
small rat. A lot, I'd say maybe the third of a size that I would feed a normal ball python. And then I'll give him 24 hours. And then when I'm handling after he feeds, I'm really very gentle when I'm putting him around my neck. I make sure I don't move him too much so I don't really stress him out. I try to make my videos as short as possible the day after feeding and put him right back into the tub. And I'd say this snake is probably an exception. For most snakes, I would wait 48 hours before handling. All right, so the sixth thing you'll see, a lot of snakes, if they're really stressed out, they will move really fast when you're handling them. And you can tell, like, like a snake like Bobby here, he's moving really super slow. If I had a snake that was really stressed, a lot of times he would move super fast around my neck. As a matter of fact, if I had a really stressed out snake, I probably wouldn't put him around my neck, especially if it was a little bit bigger than Bobby. And the funny thing is, is I have my purple albino super dwarf reticulated python. His name is Sonny, and he does not like to be held. Every time I open up the tub, you know, I can tell, you know, if I'm trying to handle him, he's always just really flighty, kind of just trying to fly out of my hands, and that is a definite sign of stress. All right, so the seventh sign of stress is that they squeeze really hard, and sometimes Bobby here, he'll choke me out of just squeezing kind of randomly. And I would say if you have a really stressed out ball python and you try to put him around your neck, he is always trying to squeeze really hard. If, if a snake is squeezing a little more than normal or really extremely hard, that is usually a sign that they're stressed out. All right, so the eighth sign for stress, especially with ball pythons, is that they form a ball and they ball up. They almost look like a, like a baseball or a softball. They'll form a complete ball. And that is essentially what a ball python does when it gets stressed out, it forms a ball. And I would say if they're really not used to being handled, they will definitely ball up into a ball. And it really takes them, some of them takes them a really long time to unball and unwind and get totally relaxed. All right, so the number nine sign that your snake is probably stressed, and that is a hunger strike. Sometimes they'll go off of food for a really long time. And I would say this one is kind of tough because ball pythons normally will go through these fasting periods, especially, you know, with, with hatchlings. They're really hard to start, really hard to feed at the beginning. And then once they get on food, they're really voracious eaters up until they get to about the 1,000 gram wall. Once they hit about 1,000 grams, I'd say anywhere between usually 800 and a thousand grams for whatever reason a lot of ball pythons just stop eating for a period of time sometimes it can be months and that is pretty normal and then once they kind of get over that hump they go back on food and then from there it just really depends I would say if, you're, if your ball python is on a really long fast a really long hunger, hunger strike a lot of times it could be that they're stressed out all right, so number 10 is probably in the top three of the most stressed out snakes that I've ever seen. You know, most, most snakes that are really super stressed, they will hiss and they will bite and they will wag their tongue really slow. If you notice on some extremely stressed out snakes, especially in like venomous, or if you get some reticulated pythons, I know my super dwarf, when I go into his tub, he gets really kind of really flighty and then his tongue wags really so he sticks it out and kind of flips it up and down really slow. That is a sign that he is extremely stressed out. All right, so I'm gonna finish up with five causes of stress, some things that you can work on. If, if you actually notice that your snake is going through some of these 10 things, and the first one is the wrong enclosure. And I would say this is probably 90% of the time that your snake is stressed out that it has the wrong enclosure, either the wrong substrate, or maybe it's got too much light for ball pythons, or it doesn't have enough room to stretch out and crawl around. If you have an arboreal species, you don't wanna keep it on the ground, you wanna put it up in the limbs or up in the tree somehow or if you have like a ball python i found ball pythons are really comfortable in a completely dark tub most of the time they like to get out a little bit but i'd say the size of the enclosure or the tub is really their safe zone they have to have some humidity in there a lot of times if you don't have the high uh, high enough humidity for ball pythons a lot of times they can get extremely stressed and go off of food it's kind of interesting if, if i let my snakes dry out really 
through my whole collection. I started having some bad sheds. A lot of them will go off of food from not enough humidity. It's kind of interesting. Or if you have too big or too small of an enclosure, I have some really big tubs, and if I put a small snake in a really big tub, even though it's completely dark, sometimes you'll see them kind of pacing around the tub because the enclosure is just a little too big. All right, so the second major cause of stress, I would say, is too much handling, especially if that snake is not used to being handled. And if you have a snake like Bobby here that's used to being handled every single day, day after day, year after year, he's completely fine with a lot of handling. But if you have a snake that's not used to handling and you start handling him a lot, sometimes it can really stress out the snake. All right, so the third cause of stress, that would be that the snake is not used to people or if it just does not like people at all. I actually have one snake that does not like anybody. As, as a matter of fact, every time I open up the tub, that snake gives me the evil eye and if I sit there and look at that snake long enough, it'll try to bite me. It's kind of crazy. It's kind of the only crazy snake I have in my whole collection of like 100 snakes. It seems like I can handle them all and I can tame them all down except that one. It's kind of really interesting that some snakes are just really hesitant to be tamed down. But I would say in most cases, if your snake is really stressed, it's probably because it's not used to people. All right, so the number four cause of stress, and that is dirty enclosures. And I found this, it's kind of interesting with having a lot of snakes. You know, I go through my collection and it's, it's always, you know, trying to stay on top of the maintenance for the rats and the snakes and everything. Sometimes I get caught up and I fall behind a little bit and it's really obvious why these snakes go off of food. And I would say a lot of times, not only is it, I'd say the number one thing is that they dry out and they don't have enough humidity, but the number two thing is is if they have dirty enclosures. So a lot of times with ball pythons, they'll go to the bathroom in the back of the tub and then they'll crawl to the front and they'll really, a lot of times they'll go off of food, they'll get stressed out and they won't actually eat until you clean up the tubs. And I found if I go through my whole collection, change all the substrates, sterilize and clean all the tubs, wait a couple days and then try to feed them all, and most of my snakes will actually eat with a really clean enclosure. All right, so the fifth major reason that your snakes can be stressed, and that is because you have a brand new snake. And I'd say this is probably the, probably one of the biggest causes of stress. You're taking a snake from its previous environment, putting it in your new enclosure with a new substrate, new husbandry, new people. Maybe you're handling it more or less than it's used to. That is a big change for a snake and can really stress out any snake. All right, so there you have it. That was 10 signs of stress and five causes of stress. Hopefully this video helps you out. I actually have some drone footage again. I've been flying my new drone around. I actually went out and got some hay for my cows. And let me tell you, you think I live in the middle of nowhere. We're kind of up here in the mountains of Colorado. I went down to get some hay from this guy in the plains of Colorado. This guy lives in the desert. And I got some really cool drone footage. I'm gonna show you that next. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.